Hi students and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian and I'm streaming to you from beautiful Victoria here in Western Canada. We are looking at an IELTS reading passage about the tapestry of lives. Now, if you're not sure about the meaning of the word tapestry, don't worry, you will learn that soon. Welcome Fuang, hi Domenico. Elizabeth Anahita, nice to see uh, many people in the class. Uh, let's just, let me check the settings here um, because I think our subscribers might not be able to. Yeah, I don't know how that happened, but anyway, this is a subscribers chat class. So subscribers and members are welcome uh, to join uh, to join the chat. Um, just subscribe it's easy click the subscribe button it's free okay all right I welcome Riyadh hi Anna Nipa nice to have all of you with me so today we're looking at um, an IELTS passage it's actually from the general uh, exams that we have but it's a passage three which is basically the same or very very similar to an academic so keep that in mind everybody that even in the reading the third section for the general IELTS is basically the same as the reading passages and the sections for the academic IELTS. So it's one passage, it's about uh, one and two third pages and uh, followed by I think about 13 or 14 questions. So we'll look at that. Again, the title will be Tapestry of Lives. It's, it's quite an interesting topic. Um, and uh, hopefully you'll enjoy that with me. Uh, this lesson is presented to you by aehelp.com and gialtshelp.com. These websites power these live classes. They have all of the materials, audio, videos, uh, lessons uh, that uh, we use in these live classes. So check them out, students. Um, the academic uh, version of our website looks like this at aehelp. Dot com. All you need to do to join the premium uh, version of our IELTS package is click the big red button and there's over a hundred uh, speaking videos there for you. Uh, videos for reading, writing, listening, so lots there. Uh, we're an IDP affiliate. We're a British Council partner and IELTS Test Registration Center, and we are world leaders when it comes to IELTS exam preparation. Okay, general IELTS looks like this gieltshelp.com. Again, uh, that big uh, red button is the way to get access, and it's a one time payment for lifetime access. We try to help as many students as we can, we don't believe in subscription models. All right, everybody. Um, so on those websites, use the code SALES9 for an extra 10% discount on checkout. Uh, you can link the apps from your app stores, Academic IELTS Help and General IELTS Help to the uh, websites. Instagram, IELTS underscore AE Help, G IELTS Help. We've got reels for you on Instagram. Okay, um, so uh, for questions, yes, uh, send me an email. Simply put, send emails to adrian at aehelp.com or admin at aehelp.com. Okay. Uh, Yadain, uh, there are lots and lots um, of materials for all the modules uh, of the IELTS exam. Okay. Uh, Shushi Shubi, uh, you are very, very welcome. We like opening doors for our students um, and not just for the IELTS, but opening doors to English communication and overall success and well-being in life. That is our goal. Uh, by joining these lessons, we teach you effective communication strategies for the IELTS, which are synonymous with the skills you need for uh, success in life as well. Communication is the key. We're humans. We're social creatures. We just did a task two writing class on the importance of speaking with your neighbors. So communication is key. And uh, in the spirit of communication, we will have a speaking part two and a speaking part three class tomorrow. Uh, so be sure to join for those also. Uh, and uh, when you have a bit of time, check out uh, the recent videos on our YouTube channel, like this one here that I will put into the chat. 
Okay, reading strategies. Uh, what do you do? You're in the reading section. Ah. First of all, don't panic. <laughs> right? Don't panic. Uh, you have lots of time. We just uh, filmed a, a video for the reading section that we're working on, and uh, we are, we talked to a very special person in that video who got a band nine in the reading section three times. And one of the tips that they give is just remember that you know you don't have to spend 20 minutes on each passage. Some passages are easier, some are more challenging. Spend more time on challenging passages. Spend less time on uh, easier passages. So, and that's a good tip. Definitely stay calm. Okay, so don't panic. You have lots of time. Stay calm and go step by step, step by step. Okay, so uh, first tip, tip one, read the title and think about it. Okay, so let's take a look at today's reading. There it is. Read aloud, everybody. Whenever you have the chance, read aloud. Reading aloud is super useful. It means hearing yourself read, okay? Read aloud. Uh, Tapestry of Lives, the uh, Kurt Gids Tush Kids, okay? That I don't know, so I don't worry about it, right? Tapestry, well, what is tapestry? Um, tapestry is cloth artwork, so it's artwork that's made with a cloth. So instead of like a shirt with a logo that you're wearing, it's a big piece of cloth with art that you hang on your wall. It's traditionally stitched or woven, uh, depicting images of kings, queens, dragons, um, and that's tapestry. Okay, tapestry's been around for hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands of years now as a part of uh, human culture. So. It's called tapestry. Kind of like painting on cloth. Yeah, shushi shubi. It's almost like a form of embroidery on a large scale. Okay. Now, if you don't know what tapestry is, don't panic. Just look at the questions. The questions might help you understand that. Okay. So Here we go with uh, the first uh, one. Complete the sentences below. Choose no more than one word from the passage. Write your answers in boxes 28 to 35. Now, this question, all of the information is in the passage somewhere, so we want to review this before we read the passage. So read with me, everybody. So nice and loud, reading with me. Okay, number 28. Nations and cultures around the world have something that are carried out at weddings, such as breaking of the glass at Jewish ceremonies. 29. Translated as edges of felt, the tushkits is generally made by hand and hung on a something. Number 30. A symbol, a symbol of pride among the Kyrgyz people. Tushkits is Tushkits are very something objects as they reflect particular interests of the couple and what is meaningful to them. Another interesting aspect of the Tushkits is that its symbol, its symbolism, can also reflect something important, such as when they include symbolism associated with the cotton industry. Okay, so obviously we're dealing with an object that is used to symbolize important parts of life. Okay, we'll learn more about it. Number thirty-two, uh, for decades. The inclusion of the Soviet hammer and sickle symbol was commonplace on Tush Gitz. This showed the couples something for the Soviet rulers. Hmm. So 20th century history and this object. Okay. Uh, number 33. The Chimiladik is a special area inside the yurt which is hidden behind a something and in front of the Tush Gitz. All right. 34. 
In addition to its usage as the backdrop for the wedding ceremony, the tush gets is also it also represents a portion of the something brought to the bond by the woman. Okay. 35. A commonly orange and red in color, tush gets also include patterns on the inside of the tapestry that are something in their detail. All right, so we've got an interesting object, cultural importance, used in weddings. I'm collecting all this information in my head before I begin my reading journey. Now, uh, 36 to 40, we've got uh, five more questions here. They're multiple choice. Multiple choice questions. I only read the question because the answers can confuse me and they're a waste of time. Okay, so multiple choice, only read the question. And then think about ways to paraphrase it. So here's the question. How many sides of the tush gets lack a border? Okay, now here, the number, the sides that do not have a border. This is the paraphrasing. So I have the paraphrasing from before here. When you see the multiple choice question, the first strategy for multiple choice is think about the question as a statement. Okay, because in the passage, they're not likely going to show this as a question. They're likely going to use different words and show it to you as a sentence, as a statement. So when it says how many sides of the tush gets lack of border, you can change that. So this number of sides does not have a border or does not have a line, something like that. Okay. 37, the question, what is the main point of the tush gets? So the main purpose of the tush is, is. Mm -hmm. 38, what does the tush kiz represent? The tush kiz is mostly shows something. Why aren't tush kiz often sold? The tush kids can rarely be purchased because. Today, where is the cultural practice of the tush kiz most common? Nowadays, where do you see the traditional making of the tush gets? That would be my paraphrase, okay? So, nowadays, where can a person most frequently uh, see the tush uh, gets being made? Okay, all right. So, that would be my paraphrase there. Okay, so at this point, it's fair to say that some readers would still really not know what is the meaning of tapestry and uh, what is the meaning maybe of a, a Kyrgyz a tush giz. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, all right, so what do I do? Okay, it's a very good question, especially if you're in the outs. Do I now panic? Ah! <laughs> no, I still don't panic. <laughs> okay, so I looked at the title. I looked at the questions. And I'm still unsure about the uh, topic, in this case, tapestry, the tush, uh, yes, I can't even spell it, Izzy, yes, what do I do? Okay, what do I do? Thank you, Fuang. Yeah, thank you. Um, what do I do? What do you think? Shushi Shubi says maybe pray. <laughs> no, there are some more logical steps that you can take. Chinese says visualize. Yeah, I can't quite. I don't know what, what to do yet. Anahita says, find out the topic from the hook. Yeah, Anahita, absolutely, you're on the right track. So uh, read the introduction 
slowly and carefully. Okay, and while you're doing that, visualize. Okay, so try to see it. All right, um, a lot of candidates at this point, they start their skimming and scanning adventures and that's not a, um, a good uh, practice. Um, this is exactly when you want to just slowly read the introduction. If you're going to read any paragraph slowly, that should be the introduction. You should read the introduction the slowest and the most careful. Um, success in the reading section in a big way is about starting slowly and then speeding up. And then, in fact, this is a very important tip and I should probably emphasize this with writing as well. So um, <clears throat> a good trick for success in reading or you could call it a strategy as well, is to start slow and then speed up. Not start fast. In fact, if there are some runners out there, it's the same uh, strategy for long distance running. Uh, and I have to be honest with you. I still don't do that sometimes when I'm in a race. When I'm doing a long distance race, like a 10 kilometer or a half marathon, um, everybody starts fast, so I start fast. And then I don't use my energy effectively. <laughs> and But the really good racers, the people who are really pro, uh, they start at their slow pace and then they actually gain speed as they go towards the finish line. Um, and um, I'm still having trouble doing that when I'm running, uh, even though I've been running for a few years. It's really hard for me to not get caught up in the crowd at the beginning and to not run quickly. And I know it's the same for a lot of people doing the IELTS reading. They start really quickly and then they start to get fatigued and tired and confused and they start to slow down. It's just like in a running race. The right strategy is actually the opposite. You start slow, careful, and then you speed up. Okay, so basically the idea is to build a strong foundation, a strong understanding of the topic, and then go quicker to identify keywords and uh, pieces of information. Um, does that does that make sense? <laughs> Shushi Subi says, you're like me, you get exhausted before you reach the finish line. Yeah, the idea is that you should be going fast when you read the finish line. Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. Okay. So, um, that's the way you want to do it. All right, everybody got it? So you start slow. So let's look at the introduction here in this reading and let's start slow, okay? Let's read it carefully. Let's make sure that we understand it. Um, Tapestry of Lives, the Kyrgyz Tush Kiz. Read with me, everyone. Cultures around the world have wedding customs, both modern and traditional. These may be actions such as the breaking of glass at Jewish ceremonies or the sawing of a log at German weddings. Customs can also be gifts, such as the Fijian custom of the groom presenting the bride's father with a sperm whale's tooth. In the Central Asian nation of Kyrgyzstan, one important custom is the gift of the traditional Tush Giz. Okay, so what is the Tush Giz, everybody? I just read the introduction, I read it slowly, hopefully we read it slowly together and we understand it. So what is the uh, Tush Giz? Okay. So Sushi Shubi uh, says it's a gift. Uh, can you be more specific? Okay. Can you be more specific? What is it? It's a special gift, says Anna. Okay, what kind of a special gift? 
Pima says it's a traditional gift. Okay, it is a traditional wedding gift in Kyrgyzstan. Right? Does everybody agree that that is the best answer so far based on the introduction? So it is a traditional wedding gift in Kyrgyzstan. Okay? That's how we should be able to understand that. Now, if you did not get this, if you did not understand this key piece of information from the introduction, what should you do? Okay? So... And of course, I'm not just talking about this reading, but any reading that you're doing. So if you cannot understand the topic clearly like this, uh, what should you do? It's a good question. Okay. Chayani says, read it twice. You're absolutely right, Chayani. Super thumbs up for you. Yeah, read the introduction again. Um, for fun. What if you still don't understand? After a second reading of the introduction. So, absolutely. So your next step is read the introduction again. And that's what I mean about starting slowly. Read the introduction again. If you still don't understand, what should you do? So you've read it twice. You still don't understand. What should you do? Good questions here. Elizabeth says, read it three times. No, do not read it again. Lydia says, move to the next paragraph. No, do not move to the next paragraph. Okay. Chani says, move on. No, because the next paragraph will probably go into more details. Pal says, read the keyword uh, sentence. No, do not read the keyword sentence. There's probably no keywords or you're not being able, you're not able to identify them. So do not look for keywords. Okay. Um, Chayani says, draw a doodle. Definitely not. Do not start doodling. Okay, Lydia says visualize. Nope. To the point says read the first and last sentence again. No, you've already read it twice. If you don't get it after two careful readings, it's not going to help. <laughs> Anna says look up in the dictionary and practice at home. Nope. What other paragraph in an essay tries to give you a global idea of the information? Ah, there we go. The conclusion, right? Absolutely. Answer, conclusion. Yeah, so a good trick is to look at the conclusion, right? Absolutely. You might get some clarity there. So let's do that. Let's jump to the conclusion. Okay, here's the conclusion. Let's read it. Okay. So, uh, due to their personal nature, Tushkits are not often bought and sold. Instead, they take on the role of family heirloom, something to be treasured. Sadly, it seems in recent years the tradition of the Tushkits is falling out of practice in Kyrgyzstan. 
The effects of globalization and urbanization have eroded the impact of traditional cultural practices. Today, the tradition of the Tush Gitz is continued primarily in the ever-shrinking rural communities of Kyrgyzstan. While big cities may offer economic prosperity, it is also important to remember where one comes from. If we only look forward, we miss the rich cultural tapestry lying behind us, figuratively or literally. literally. Okay. So I read the conclusion. Does it help me more? Mm, I'll be honest with you, not really in this case. So, okay. So what do I do now? I still don't understand. What do I do? Okay, so the topic's still challenging for me. It's confusing for me. There are a lot of words I'm not understanding clearly. I'm having difficulty picturing the main idea. What do I what do I do? <laughs> Eero says, you've wasted your money. Carolina says cry. No. Um, everyone, solutions. We're humans. We're here to solve problems. That's what we do. We're problem solvers. We are the ultimate machines to problem solve. Okay. Angel says, don't take the exam. You're already in the exam, Angel. You don't you've already paid the money. You you make the best of it. Chani says, surrender. No, nah, not yet, Chayani. You do a lot before you surrender. Okay. Pal says, go to the next paragraph. Nope. Okay. Ask your teacher. You can't ask your teacher. You can't ask the examiner. They can't help you or the vigilators. Okay. All right. Well, if you, if you can, I mean, it depends on where you are, but at this point, if this is not obviously your last passage, go to another passage and come back to this one later okay all right so go to another reading passage get your brain working in English get the gears moving get your head thinking on simpler information and then come back later all right so take a deep breath exactly Anna so that's what you want to do all right so go to another passage. Don't struggle and don't waste a ton of time trying to figure out a difficult passage. If there are other passages that you have not read yet, then go to those passages, right? If there aren't, then you want to continue reading, okay? But if there are, then go to a different passage and come back, okay? Pal7 said, I said this. Uh, Pal7, you said go to the next paragraph, not go to the next passage. Make sure you're communicating clearly. Okay, paragraph and passage are not the same. Okay, all right. Um, so that's basically your strategy. All right, you never panic. There are lots of steps that you can take before you start to panic. All right, <laughs> everybody got it. <laughs> you should never panic on the IELTS exam. Okay, you should always just go step by step. Uh, here's a thought to. Um, uh, keep you motivated on your super brain's ability to figure out passages. Always keep this in mind. Okay, so if some clever archaeologists and linguists, those are some scientists, can figure out the meaning of hieroglyphs, like strange Egyptian drawings, then uh, you too can figure out the IELTS passage. So if there's a person out there that can look at a uh, wall in a pyramid 
and <clears throat> they can figure out that um, this little uh, character uh, means that um, we're really happy okay uh, then you can figure out the IELTS passage all right so keep that in mind hieroglyphs um, are pictures that are basically letters or words used in ancient times to create text to create documentation and text okay so if people can figure that out you can figure out the IELTS passage all right keep that as a motivating thought all right okay um, let's read this okay all right let's do it so let's read bear with me you will understand it by the end we will be doing reading together as well here we go uh, tapestry of lives the Kyrgyz Tush Kiz cultures around the world have wedding customs both modern and traditional these may be actions such as the breaking of glass at Jewish ceremonies or the sawing of a log at German weddings. Customs can also be gifts such as the Fijian custom of the groom presenting the bride's father with a sperm whale's tooth. In the Central Asian nation of Kyrgyzstan, one important custom is the gift of the traditional tush giz. Tushgiz, literally translated as edges of felt, are elaborate wall hangings or tapestries. They are made by hand by the bride's mother or grandmother and often take many months or even years to make. They are given to the newly married couple as a symbol of their union and as a symbol of their pride in the Kyrgyz history and tradition. Tushgids are deeply personal. While in the past these tapestries reflected general social interest in the form of ancient themes such as religious and cultural symbolism, in the 20th century the custom moved towards incorporating the particular interests of the couple and what was meaningful to them. However, cultural symbolism is still common. For example, imagery associated with the cotton industry is a common theme in 20th century Tush Gitz. Because the cotton industry was of such immense economic importance, it had taken on cultural importance as well. Tushkits, especially during the Soviet period, were also opportunities to demonstrate one's support for the Soviet regime in Moscow. Oftentimes, uh, Tushkits of the period would include communist symbolism such as the hammer and the sickle, which adorn the Soviet flag. They may also have celebrated Kyrgyz contributions to the Soviet Union, such as the region's role in the Federation's space program of the 1950s and 1960s. These elegant tapestries are more than just a wedding gift. They also play an important role in the Kyrgyz wedding ceremony. The bride on the wedding day sits in a chimiladik or curtained off area inside a special yurt in front of the tush kids embroidered by her loved ones the tush kids acts as the backdrop to the wedding ceremony symbolizing the union of two individuals as well as two families furthermore it constitutes part of the dowry the bride brings to the marriage and after the wedding it takes a special place in the yurt house of the newly married couple. The tushkits themselves are quite large. In general they measure approximately 6 feet tall by 12 feet wide or about 2 meters tall by 3 meters wide. Notably they are almost always highlighted by orange or red tones including the outer edge which is generally a solid color as opposed to the diverse color palette and intricate pattern details of the interior of the tapestry. One interesting aspect of the Tushgids is that the outer border 
traces only three of the four sides of the fabric. The bottom side is borderless. The reason for this is based in the tapestry's ceremonial aspect, the Tushkits is not primarily a piece of art, though it is certainly beautiful and worthy of aesthetic appreciation. Rather, its primary purpose is a framing of the bride and then the married couple. That is, the body and especially the head of the bride and eventually the groom are an integral part of the Tush kits. The fabric itself acts as the cultural foundation for the couple. It is literally and figuratively their background. It is where they come from and who they are. And yet, they sit facing outwards from the tapestry as if their background does not define their future. Due to their personal nature, Tush kits are often are not often bought and sold. Instead, they take on the role of family heirloom, something to be treasured. Sadly, it seems that in recent years, the tradition of the Tush kits is falling out of practice in Kyrgyzstan. The effects of globalization and urbanization have eroded the impact of traditional cultural practices. Today, the tradition of the Tushkits is continued primarily in the ever-shrinking rural communities of Kyrgyzstan. While big cities may offer economic prosperity, it is also important to remember where one comes from. If we only look forward, we miss the rich cultural tapestry lying behind us, figuratively or literally. All right, that's the reading. Now, students, uh, what we're going to do is uh, give you a chance to read as well. And then we will answer the questions. Okay. So uh, let's do this together. I'm going to show you how and um, hopefully Carolina is here and can help us a little bit also by putting the instructions into the chat. Now, if you didn't understand it all right away, that's okay. Don't worry. We will work on this together. Okay. All right. So go to aehelp.com. You can see Carolina has added um, the instructions. Log in uh, to your My Student account and click on My uh, Student uh, Partner Speaking. So uh, here you have the... Um, website. Again, uh, you can uh, access the premium version of our IELTS course by clicking the big red button and joining the premium IELTS package. One-time payment, lifetime access. Okay. Uh, we're an IDP affiliate, British Council partner, IELTS test registration center certified <clears throat> British Council agents. You are in great hands with us. Okay. Uh, log in, go to your My Student account, and uh, you'll see your computer based practice exams, uh, interactive course, uh, study books that you can download, uh, lesson videos, audio CDs, much more. Uh, go to Student Partner Speaking right there. Again, just above my head. And then once you click on that, Accept the terms that you are going to be responsible. You use this for your studies and you'll see other people in here as well. So we see Ronit, Asana, Ridham, Chayani, Lydia, Angel, Anna, Riyad, Fuang. Uh, and uh, they're ready to go, ready to read. Uh, so you'll see me in here as well. You'll see a blue envelope next to my name. You're going to see me in here as master. Okay. Uh, send me a message. So click that blue envelope next to master and uh, just write, you know, I want to read or can I try? And then we'll do this. Uh, let me put on my headset here and then we'll give some students a chance. Riyad, one of our premium students and longtime members as well, hardworking. Let's give Riyad a chance. Riyad, are you ready? I think Riyad was the very first one to send a message. So, and Riyad did not have a chance yesterday in the speaking. So Riyad, if you're there, let me know. Uh, we'll give this a shot here. Okay. Make sure your camera, your microphone are working. Make sure you have a good internet connection. 
uh, you have a stable IP. That's usually quite important. Okay. All right. So, Riyadh, if you're still there, yeah, let me know. Perfect. All right, Riyadh, sounds like you picked up, but I can't hear you, uh, so I'm not sure what's going on there. Uh, let me try somebody else, Riyadh, check your connection. I'll do the same if I can't get a hold of the next person. So um, I think um, Chayani was second, and she didn't have a chance yesterday either. So Chayani, are you ready? just want to make sure that it's not on my end here either. Uh, sometimes students, if you're having difficulty making connections, by the way, uh, just do a shift, refresh, reconnect to the servers, uh, and then often that will clear up the situation. For some of you, you have to use a VPN for this service, okay? And it's free. It is free. Okay, keep that in mind. All right. Okay, so Chayani, I didn't hear you as well. Okay, um, I'll, I'll try one more. I'll try Fuang before I start refreshing my page, but let's um, let's do this and then I'll circle back to our other two volunteers there. Fuang, are you ready? Okay. Fong, I can't hear you either. So I'm just going to shift refresh my page. Um, just give me two seconds and then hopefully that'll um, fix this up. Okay. Uh, and yeah, looks like the speaker should work for sure. Okay, let's try this again. Um, so I can see that. Um, uh, Chayani's back here. So Chayani, let's try this again. All right. Okay, Chayani, I'm going to give you a call here. Hi, Chayani. Hello, Adrian. How are you? I'm doing good. How about you? I'm doing fantastic. Thank you for asking. Yeah, so... It looks like the issue was on my side. I just needed to do a little shift refreshing, reconnecting. Um, how is uh, the day in uh, in Indonesia? The day right now is quite warm and also hot. Have a um, significant temperature. Are there any um, traditional wedding gifts in uh, Indonesian culture, Chayani? Mm, yes, there are. Like um, fabric, some of the fabric that I, I like a batik, like, yeah, it's like a similar, like the Kyrgyz, I mean like Kyrgyz Tuskis. Oh, it is, okay, so it's kind of like yeah. a tapestry. Okay, and you see yes. that in the Indonesian culture as well. Is it also, do you also put it on the wall, the the cloth mm -hmm. or the? No, I tend to keep it on my wardrobe. <laughs> on your wardrobe, but it's is it meant to go on the wall? Is that the idea? Yes, great idea. Yeah, so, so then it is, yeah, so then it's definitely a, a type of tapestry. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm, yeah. All right, great. Well, then, you know, if you have it in your culture, it's probably a little bit easier to understand this, right? Because you're like, oh, it's kind of like what we have in my culture, right? So that's <laughs> that's helpful. All right, Chayani, um, read a couple paragraphs for us. So um, you should see the reading on the screen now. Uh, start from the title and read the introduction. Um, skip the question that I have there, and then I'll get this first body paragraph up for you as well. Whenever you're ready, go for it. Tapestry of lives, the Kyrgyz Tuskis. Cultures around the world would have wedding customs, both modern and traditional. These may be action, such as the breaking of glass at Jewish ceremonies or the sewing of a lock at German weddings. Custom can also be gifts, such as the Fijian custom 
of the groom presenting the bride father with a sperm whale tooth. In, in the Central Asian nation of Kyrgyzstan, one important custom is the gift of the traditional tashkis. Okay, keep going from tashkis. Tashkis, literally translated as age of felt, are elaborated wall hanging or tapestries. They are made by hand by the priest mother and grandmother, and often take many months or even years to make. They are given to the newly married couple as a symbol of their dear union, as a symbol of their pride of Kyrgyz history and tradition. Okay, great. So this first body paragraph is really what actually tells us what this is, right? Okay. Yes. So um, here, especially the topic sentence is very, very important. The tush gets literally translated as edges of felt are elaborate wall hangings. So this is a key phrase, right? Elaborate wall hangings. And then the author knows that, you know, this might be a little bit tricky for some people. So they give you a second definition here, which is the or tapestries, right? So this or is an important one. In English, the or is kind of used like a comma. Sometimes we do this with a comma. Sometimes we use the word or to tell the reader that this is the definition, right? Um, All right. And sometimes we even will say something like this. The, um, so the reason I'm telling you this, Chani, I'm telling this basically to everybody, is there are some ways um, that uh, you can give definition in speaking or in writing to help your reader or you help your listener understand you. So you have to learn these before your IELTS exam because then you can see that, oh, that's the definition. So our elaborate wall hangings or also known as tapestries right the also known as is understood by the reader okay um, or you could instead of the or you could just have a comma so you could just have our elaborate wall hangings comma tapestries and then we know that that comma means that whatever was before it is a definition of that okay so really pay attention to that use of the comma and the or or these expressions which tell you that this is the definition for this word. Does that make sense, Chani? Yeah, I got it. Okay. All right. Okay, cool. Uh, Chani, great reading. Um, any questions about any words? Uh, are there any other words here that are unfamiliar for you in these two paragraphs where you're like, what is that? Mm. Um, that I got uh, that I didn't understand it is mm -hmm. in the last paragraph is the word eroded. Eroded. Yeah. Okay. Um, oh, in the very last paragraph of the actual uh, uh, entire passage, right? Yes. Sir. So it's in in the conclusion. Um, mm -hmm. Let me just see uh, right here. So the effects. Can you read this uh, sentence for us, um, Chayani? The effects of globalization. The effect of globalization and urbanization have eroded the impact of traditional cultural practices. Okay, good. So when you don't understand a, a student, uh, sorry, when you don't understand a word, students, in the reading, then uh, always try to understand it from context. Of course, in the IELTS, you don't have a dictionary. You can't ask for the definition. So you have to try to understand it from the situation. Okay, from this situation, Chani, what do you think it means? So the effects of globalization and urbanization have eroded the impact of traditional cultural practices. What do you think globalization and urbanization have done to traditional cultural practices? I think it is bit, um, the globalization and urbanization has destroyed or vanished the basic um, cultural practice. Yeah, and you're absolutely right. So in this case, eroded kind of means like destroyed or damaged. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, it's it's not the exact meaning of eroded and when you have the chance you should always look up the meaning and then you can understand it better. Uh, in this case I'm here so I can help you with it Chayani. To erode uh, means to gradually wear down and destroy. 
Okay, the most common place where we see the word erode um, is uh, usually used in biology, especially in nature. Okay, uh, we often use it with the weather. Okay, so uh, and in Indonesia, unfortunately, you can actually use this um, uh, quite a bit, um, like saying the floods have uh, eroded uh, the uh, main uh, street in uh, downtown Jakarta. Okay, so uh, in this case it would mean that all of the floods or the water that comes in during the heavy rain season in Indonesia, it causes a lot of erosion. Uh, which means that it wears down the buildings, the streets, the trees, the soil. Okay, um, in nature you'll hear, just repeat after me, Chani, everybody can repeat this, soil erosion. Soil erosion. Okay, the earth is washed away and plants cannot grow. Okay. So in nature, we say soil erosion. When the rain or the water washes away all the soil, there's only rock or sand that's, that remains, and then plants don't grow. So soil erosion is bad for people. It's bad for farming. Okay. Um, so does that give you a clear idea of what the word erode or erosion means? Yes, right now it's clear. Okay. Thank you, my assistant. Yeah, you're very welcome. And students always do take a time, take the time to identify new words when you're practicing at home. Um, so thanks again, um, Chayani, for volunteering. Uh, and what you should do is uh, today when you're using English, uh, try to use the word erosion as soon as possible. Okay, so it stays in your head. Okay, then I the end. Okay. All right. Bye, Chayani. Okay. Bye, Adrian. Thank you. All right. Thumbs up to Chayani. That was really good. All right. Let me circle back to, um, I'm not sure if uh, Riyadh is still here. Riyadh, did you reconnect? Mm, I don't see Riyadh. Uh, and Fuang was next. So let's give Fuang a second chance here. Fuang, are you ready to read? Uh, read. <clears throat> yeah. Are you ready to read? Okay. So thank you, Chayani. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Fuang, if you're there, let me know. Um, we'll just jump right in. So, okay, uh, words, get them from context. You don't have to know them perfectly. As long as you kind of know what they mean, that's often enough for the IELTS, okay? Fuang? I still do not hear you. Hopefully I didn't disconnect on my end again. I don't think so, but uh, we'll see. Um, Maya, are you ready? Nope, I'm just calling you. I meant to message you, Maya, but if you hear me, then just pick it up. <laughs> mm. Okay, um, let, let me just message Maya here. Maya, are you there? That's why I don't like calling people. Like, Surprise, who is that? Who's calling me? What's going on? <laughs> right. um, all right, Maya, if you're there, yes, let me try you. Okay, I'll try you again. Can you try to pick up? Mm, that definitely did not work. Okay, um, let me try one more before I do any kind of refreshing. Um, and again, students, that's what I recommend. Try at least one or two people before you refresh because uh, these systems are so complicated, you never know who uh, the issue may be with. So Lydia, are you ready? Right, chat systems are complex. Complex indeed. Don't call me though. That would just get really confusing. Hi, Lydia. How are you? I am doing good. How are you doing? I'm doing very great, great. Thanks for asking. Awesome. Okay. Um, Lydia, can you remind me which country you're from? Um, from Syria, but I'm living in the United Arab Emirates. Right. Okay. Okay. Got you. 
Um, all right, uh, Lydia, uh, the reason I was asking is I couldn't remember if you're from a Slavic speaking country, but you're not from a Slavic speaking country. I, I will eventually get someone here from a Slavic speaking country like Uzbekistan to uh, volunteer so that we mm -hmm. can get the, pr the correct pronunciation on, the, on these words because <laughs> they're, they're kind of Slavic words, I think. So, um, all right, um, Lydia, when you're ready, uh, go ahead and uh, read the next two paragraphs. So start with Tush Kits. Okay. Tush, um, okay. Uh, tush just do your is, just do your best. So this is this is an, actually an important tip for everybody. When you okay. see words that you can't pronounce in the IELTS reading, even in your head, don't get stuck on them. Just read read through them. Okay. So okay. go for okay, it. Okay, Mister. Tushkins are deeply personal. While in the past these tapestries reflected general social interests in the form of ancient themes such as religious and cultural symbolism. In the 20th century, the custom moved towards incorporating the particular interests of the couple and what was meaningful to them. However, cultural symbolism is still common. For example, imagery associated with the cotton industry is a common theme in 20th century Tushkism because the cotton industry was, in, was, uh, was of such immense economic importance it had taken on cultural importance as well. Keep going. Um, should I? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, Mister, can you scroll down a little mm -hmm. bit? It's coming. Okay. Um, Tushkis, especially during the Soviet period, were also opportunities to demonstrate one support for the Soviet regime in Moscow. Oftentimes, Tushkis of the period would include communist symbolism such as the hammer and sickle which adorned the Soviet flag. They may also have celebrated uh, Kyrgyz contributions to the Soviet Union, such as the region's role in the Federation space program of the 1950s and 1960s. Great. Um, Lydia, these two paragraphs together, uh, what's the main goal here? What, what is the main um, concept that the author is trying to give you, the reader, in these two paragraphs. These, this is always a thought that you should be thinking when you're doing the reading in the aisles. Um, so what, what, do you, what would you say in a simple one sentence response? What's the main concept that the reader is trying to give the, re uh, the author is trying to give the reader? Um, I believe it is about the history of this tradition gift of Tushkis. Mm, not quite. That's not the way I would answer that. It's not far off from what I would say. Can you try it again? So think about what you read in the paragraph, uh, the first one that you read and the second one that you read and then really just think about it in a kind of a simple. Now simple is not easy but in a simple way. So these two paragraphs, what is the main goal for the author here? Um, probably um, can I say this uh, the meaning of Tushkis or uh, the symbol to what, closer. what is this? Um, yeah, I think you're very, very close with that answer. Yeah. The importance of Tushkis? The inclusions on the Tushkis. Mm -hmm. So if you ask me, so ask me, just, just the question that I literally just wrote there, just ask me that same question. Okay, uh, what do the two paragraphs uh, talk about what are the main topic what is the main topic of the two paragraphs okay. so these two paragraphs mostly highlight what is included in this object or in this imagery of the tush gets okay it includes the couple's interests in modern times as well as symbolizes the culture history of the country Okay, that's that's what the that's what these two paragraphs talk about. Like what we actually see and what what we can expect to see in this tapestry. Does that make mm -hmm. sense? Yes, Mr. Addy. Okay. Now when you have that, you can go to the next concept. So here we're working on comprehension, right? And to get into those high band scores on the IELTS, like seven, eight, nine, especially on the academic version, you have to have comprehension. You can't just do it by kind of understanding what's going on. You have to have a fairly good like 80 90 percent understanding so and from here we can go to the next logical step which is what is included so let me ask you this Lydia uh, in your words in a simple way 
what is included in this tapestry? So in this picture, let's say, in this fabric picture, uh, what do they include? Uh, based on the two paragraphs that mm -hmm. I read, Mr. Adrian? Mm -hmm. Um, it talks, uh, uh, it is about the color interest as well as uh, the symbol, uh, how it symbolizes the history of the country. Great. That's great. That was a great answer, right? Now we have the right train of thought, so now we're giving some great answers. Okay. Um, what example does the author give to support this fact? Um, about uh, the Soviet Union. Right, because Kyrgyzstan was a part of the Soviet Union, right? So can mm -hmm. you give me a specific uh, example of what image we can see in this um, tapestry? Um, From the Soviet Union? So what, what specific image can we see from the Soviet Union in this tapestry? Is it... Um communist symbolism and economic importance specifically what though specifically what is that symbolism um it is sickle and hammer yeah that's right and um those of you who are familiar with your 20th century history will know that the uh, soviets uh, depicted the hammer which kind of looks i think like this in their image and then um, the sickle which kind of looked like this I believe the sickle is what's used to harvest plants like um, like cotton for example so um, or like wheat so it's like a special curved blade knife that you use to cut down um, are you familiar with this hammer sickle symbolism Lydia uh, maybe in the history they like I saw some pictures of this figure in the past Oh yeah, it would have been very, very common in the 20th century. In late. the wars, right, Mr. Adrian? Um, second half of the 20th century, okay. so 1950 to 2000, you would have been really familiar with the uh, hammer and the sickle of the of the Soviets. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and also there was another one, it, even if you didn't get that. So let's say you're like, well, I don't know my 20th century history, so I don't know the sickle. There was another symbolism that was, uh, that was talked about um, kind of at the end there. I wonder if you caught that from the also from the Soviet uh, inclusion. Do you, do you remember what that was? No. It was the space program. So as some of you probably know, the Americans and the Soviets were in a big race uh, during the space program, right? So Sputnik for the Soviets and then of course the moon landing for the Americans. They were trying to show who is uh, technologically more advanced and um, uh, I'm not sure exactly how Kyrgyzstan played a role in that but uh, maybe like a, if you looked at a Turgids from that time you would see like a spaceship um, from on some of these tapestries taking off right okay so that could be it so you should be visualizing so Lydia you're on the right track okay so good reading you have nice fluent reading really focus on comprehension and um, what I recommend doing Lydia and this is for everybody is find a reading partner so people are often like okay I, I want a speaking partner well it's good to combine that with reading so find a quote-unquote speaking partner and do reading exercises with them where you read a paragraph or a few paragraphs like this and then talk about it almost kind of like a book club does that make sense Lydia yes mr. Adrian do you ever do that do you have somebody that you can do that um, with? Actually, I don't have a partner, but I'm actually reading a book. It is called Start With Why. It is uh, about uh, self-growth uh, self and entrepreneurship. And I usually read loudly, as you, uh, like you mentioned many times, to read loudly. So, mm -hmm. But like I prefer to read alone rather mm -hmm. than having a partner. So I will be more able to concentrate on my, my reading comprehension. Yeah, one place where you often do this in university, and if I'm not mistaken, Lydia, you are doing your master's right now or your PhD, something like that, postgraduate, or um, you not? Actually, uh, I'm a bachelor's student, but I will, I'm preparing for my master's degree. You're preparing for your master's, so you, I'm sure, probably read journals, right? Yes, right. 
Okay. Uh, for those of you who are just starting university, you're going to be reading lots of journals in university. Journals are basically long essays that are on a specific topic. Now, journals are often peer reviewed and peer discussed. So are you ever in a situation, Lydia, where uh, you read a journal and somebody else that you're working with or in your class reads uh, the same journal and then you talk about it? Yes, actually, yes. That happened in uh, a major course. It is called uh, Research Methods in Psychology when we had uh, three to five uh, uh, jo uh, journal articles and we had to write a literature review about one of them. Right. So that's this kind of exercise, right? So um, there's a reason for the way IELTS does the exam and that's the, the reason the academic has just three longer passages because it's kind of like doing or getting you ready for journal reading in university and peer review or peer discussion. So when you have the chance and if it's not an IELTS passage, Lydia, then do it with journals, um, work with partners and discuss them see mm. if you understand the same ideas okay it's really good practice does that make sense yes sure mr adian i'll certainly follow that okay all right lydia thank you so much for sharing and for helping me bounce some ideas have an awesome rest of your day hopefully thank i'll see you, you so much you're welcome in tomorrow's class as well bye lydia bye bye mr adian have a nice day too all right so um yeah a lot of people tend to make reading like a very individual activity that we just do by ourselves but there is a certain type of magic to reading together and working together um, on reading information, sharing it, just like sharing movies, okay? A movie is like a visual passage, right? And we love to share movies with others. Um, reading used to be that way. People used to share books and popular book topics together, but we don't do it as much, okay? Golda, those are some really nice uh, results. You're super welcome. Can you send me a testimonial, Golda, when um, you have a moment? Can you write an email, please, Golda? We like, we love getting testimonials, especially from members, premium members that definitely used a lot of our products and saw me teach. So uh, please do that. So Golda, um, please send me your testimonial to Adrian or admin at uh, aehelp.com. Okay, and congratulations on that great score. 7.5 is awesome. 8.5 in reading and listening, that's outstanding. And 6.5 in writing and speaking is solid, solid, solid scores, Golda, so good job. Okay, all right. Uh, let me um, try another person here. We'll get into some questions. Okay, Maya, let me see if uh, you're there. Maya, are you ready? Okay, we'll get into some questions here about this tapestry. Okay, if you're there, Maya, let me know and we will connect. And we're going to jump to some questions. I'd like to tackle some of those questions before we run short on time. So if you're there Maya you are there okay mm, still can't connect Maya um, what I'm going to do everyone is well I'll let me try Sarvar first here um, and then if we really I'd like to catch somebody like I say from a, a Slavic country so that we can actually hear how these words are supposed to be pronounced at least once. <laughs> uh, Sarvar, are you there? If you're there, let me know. And then if not, I'm going to shift refresh my uh, page and then maybe I can... Anna, you can probably help us maybe pronounce these correctly. I mean, you're, well, because I think, Anna, you're from the Ukraine, right? So you can you probably have a better pronunciation of these key words here. Okay, um, Tizzy, I don't think we've ever spoken to Tizzy, no, let me do a shift refresh uh, and then I'll reconnect to the servers and hopefully we get a little bit of a smoother transition going here. All right, I've refreshed, I can see all of you, uh, send me a message. Um, Anna, if you're there, I would love to get you to volunteer even just for a couple minutes um, to see if you can help us 
pronounce these words as they should, because I'm sure some of you who are from countries like uh, uh, Ukraine, Russia, Kyrgyzstan, Uzbekistan, Kazakhstan, you're probably like, oh, you guys are slaughtering these words. <laughs> That's not how they're pronounced at all. <laughs> right? So uh, it'd be nice for sure. Anahit, I see there as well. You did get a chance yesterday, so I'm trying to give a little bit of a, a fair, even distribution. Uh, shift refresh on your end as well, everybody. Okay, I'm sure Anahita has done that. All right, Anahita, I will reward your vigilance. Um, so are you ready? Might also help that Anahita's in Canada, so she's probably connecting a little bit easier. Although our servers are actually in the US. So, well, relatively close to Canada. Okay. Anahita, if you're there. Mm -hmm. Sir? Hi, Anahita. How are you, sir? I am doing good. Good for you for being so vigilant. You're just very <laughs> studious. It's yeah, fantastic. I'm lucky today. <laughs> You're very studious. That's good. Okay, um, Anahita, we're going to jump to some questions here. And um, Anahita, whereabouts are you from? Uh, I'm originally from Afghanistan. Afghanistan, yeah. Afghanistan had a very close relationship with the uh, Soviet Union as well, right? Yeah, in the past. In the past, in the... Um, yeah, but um, Afghani is closer to Arabic than it is to Slavic languages, right? Yeah. Right, yeah. but there are but, but there's quite a bit of mixing. Like I'm sure that there must have been some Russian language coming into Afghanistan in the 20th century as well. No, um, but uh, uh, because today. Uh, uh, British Britannians are affecting the uh, Afghanistan, so I think there are um, now people are using more uh, English words. Uh, be, but because I lived in Tajikistan and I know Tajik people, Tajik uh, people are uh, a little bit influenced by Soviet uh, by Russian. So there are many people who know Russian mm -hmm. in Tajikistan. So how do you think we should be pronouncing this word "tush kids"? Like, what's the how do you think they would pronounce that? Uh, actually, I don't know to be honest. Fair enough. That's fair. <laughs> All right. Well, let's look at some questions. So I have question 28, 29, 30, 31 here for us. Uh, let's do this. Um, this is fill in the blanks. Usually fill in the blank questions follow the order of the passage. So can you read question 28 for us? Yes. 28. Nations and cultures around the world have something that are carried out at weddings, such as the breaking of the glass at Jewish ceremonies. Uh, okay. Is it kosher? Just a second. What do you think the word is? Uh, oh, sorry. Because culture is only there, around the world have... Uh, um, so you're, tr you're, trying to, you're trying to guess what this word is, right? In the blank? Yeah, I forgot. Yeah, Anahita, but that's the right step. That's the right strategy. So that's what you should be doing. Okay. The correct strategy for fill in the blanks is to try to figure out what that word could be or should be before you start searching the text. It's at kind of at the beginning, right? In the first paragraph. Um, okay. All right. So you're having difficulty. So we can go back to the paragraph. Maybe it is customs. It could be. Um, read the first sentence. Cultures around the world have uh, within customs, both modern and traditional. Is, mm. is it cost, at this custom, yeah. Yeah, so be sure, by that time you should be sure, yeah. So customs, so you put it in and you move on, okay? Mm. Um, but you did the right step, at first you tried to fill it in on your own, okay? All right, read 29 and do the same. So try to fill it in on your own and then we'll check. Uh, translated as age of felt, the uh, tush kiss is generally made by hand and hung on a wall. On a wall? Yeah, because it was saying that it is uh, hang, wall hanging, something like that. Okay. And so you're like, 
95% sure, right? Yeah. Okay. In that case, don't check the text. Move on. Okay. Uh, this is an interesting tip for everybody where a lot of people tend to just check, 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 even when they're quite sure. Um, don't do that. So when you're 90% or more, then just put the answer down and move on. Uh, number 30. A symbol of pride among the uh, Kyrgyz people. Tushkis are really something objects as they reflect particular interests of the people, the couple, and what is meaningful to them. Mm -hmm. uh, impressive? Impressive no. objects? Maybe. Mm -hmm. What else do you think might go in there? Important. Object. Sure. So Tushkits are very impressive or very important. So these are adjectives that are describing the Tushkits, right? Now, no. um, uh, where do you think we'll find this information? Uh, in the middle paragraphs, in the body paragraphs. Probably in this in the second paragraph here still where it's telling us about the edges of felt. So if we go back, it's very important strategy to know where to look, right? So if we go back, uh, we can see that here it tells us that they are wall hangings. You're right, so they're hung on the wall, okay? Um, and then they're, they're, the next... Um, uh, answer is probably coming from later on in this paragraph, so we can skim a little bit. Um, read the uh, this last sentence. Uh, which sentence? They are given to the newly. They are given to the newly married couple as a symbol of their union and as, uh, as a symbol of their pride in Kyrgyz history and tradition. So the word is pride. We don't see it there yet. Okay, careful, don't jump to conclusions. Um, we don't see it there yet, so what you wanna do in this case is go, okay, I need to do a little bit more reading. So keep reading. Uh, Tushkis are deeply personal, while in the past these uh, tapestries uh, reflected general social interest and in that uh, form of ancient- okay, stop thing. reading, stop reading. Okay, so the answer was there. The question is, did you catch it? And here, to catch the answer, you have to catch the paraphrase for the word very. The word very is kind of a general uh, term that means a lot. But in English, there are lots of ways to say that more specifically or in different ways. So know the paraphrasing for words like very. So very can be a lot or another way to say very. You just read it. What is another way to say very? Uh, money? No. no. Somebody in the uh, Chayani in the chat there has the right uh, answer. And <laughs> I think she put it in there even before I said it. Deeply. Right. Deeply and very are both adjectives here. So the correct answer then is? Deeply. Mm, well, that's the, that's the very. What comes after deeply? Personal. Okay. So the answer for 30 is? Personal. Absolutely. Okay. So uh, the word important seems like it could be okay here, but that seems a little bit too easy. Okay. IELTS is not that easy, especially not in part three. Sometimes, but that's very rare. You'll have a word like important here. It's going to be something a little bit trickier, a little bit more specific, right? So mm -hmm. number 30, can you read that again? A symbol of pride among the Kyrgyz people, uh, Tushkis are really personal objects as they reflect particular interests of the couple and what is meaningful to them. Okay, and that's correct. So the key advice here is really pay attention to the previous word and the paraphrasing. And if it seems too easy, you have to look a second time. Okay, all right, oh. so you gotta be sure. Okay. All right. Um, we'll give some others a chance here, Anahita. We'll stop there, but that was really good. Uh, thank you so much for helping with those questions. Thanks a lot sir, for giving me a chance to speak. Absolutely. To that was great. Uh, speaking and reading. <laughs> You're right in both cases. Bye, Anahita. Yeah. Have a great rest of your Friday. <laughs> It is sir. Goodbye. Bye. All right. Thumbs up for Anahita. Uh, Maya, let's try again. Um, yeah, let's try one more time. <laughs> and Maya says you pronounced it right, Tish Kitz. Okay, we'll try to get you on here, Maya. So are you ready? Um, and then get the correct pronunciation here. 
If you can talk to others, you can probably talk to me. We just need to have the right connections and routing through the right places in the world, and the right servers, and we'll be able to connect. Sometimes it's just a matter of refreshing, refreshing, because often when you refresh, you connect to different servers eventually. Maya says, yes, I am. Okay, Maya, let's try it one more time. Give you a second. Maybe you can connect here. But it didn't really pick up. Uh, Maya, can you try calling me in this case? I'm very curious if you do that, if you go the other way, if we can make a connection. see if that works hi Maya hello that seemed to work <laughs> if it doesn't work one way it might work the other way can you hear me hello <laughs> interesting I can hear you but um, I can hear you but you can't hear me can you hear me I can yes wow hello Edwin Oh, can you hear? Can you hear me now? Yes. No, okay. All right. Uh, that was interesting. It took a minute. And you hear me through the website, not through YouTube, right? Yes. Perfect. Not through YouTube. All right, uh, Maya. Which country are you from? Can you remind me? Well, uh, I'm currently in Turkey, but mm -hmm. originally I'm from Turkmenistan. Okay, so you can pronounce these words, right? <laughs> yes, you pronounce it right. <laughs> can you pronounce? Can you print? Can you sorry? Can you say that once, nice and loud, for everybody, so we can hear that pronunciation? Um, tush keys. Tush keys. It, that yes. sounds a bit better than me, I think, when you say it's it. It's a cap it, you know, kind of cap it. Okay, and it's a U sound, like a two tush keys. Okay. Tush keys. Touche keys. Got it. Okay. Um, so help me out with some of these questions. Number 31, can you read that for me, please? Another interesting aspect of the Touche keys is that its symbolism can also reflect importance, such as when they include symbolism associated with the cotton industry. Mm hmm. Okay. Yeah. What do you think goes yeah. in there? What kind of importance? Um, there was words related to economics. I can't remember. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a good word, though. Use that one. If it's in your head, you should Economics use it. Economic importance? Economic importance. Yeah, it could be, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Cotton industry makes sense. That's the economy, right? Um, so you have the word economy in your head. That was a really good word to have in your head. That's that's what the IELTS takes is good thinking like that. Yes. While, while reading, I got distracted with fixing my website. That was <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, tip for everybody, when you're in the aisles, do not get distracted by other thoughts or situations, okay? Uh, so focus on the task at hand. At home, that might happen, but not on the aisles, okay? All right, uh, economic. Now, um, if you're searching for this, like if you're like, oh, okay, um, I want to check this because I'm not sure if it's economic or cultural or other um, historical, uh, what would you search for? Maya's. Sorry, can you repeat? Yeah. If you wanted to check this answer, economic importance, and you want to make sure that's correct and that's the correct answer, what should you look for? What words should you look for? What are the key words? I use economic. that. Economic. Yeah, you could look for economic, which could yes. be the answer, or what else could you look for? Cotton. Mm-hmm. Very smart, Maya. Absolutely. Cotton, right? Because that's the target here is the cotton industry when the author is using that term. You're right. So in a perfect situation, you're looking at cotton industry while you're con thinking about economic. Okay. So let's do that. Okay. Um, so here... Um, Let's see. Okay. Uh, I see it now. Do you see the word cotton? Um, yes. 
Okay. Need to stay is a common theme. Good, good. Century. Good. Read it. Read it for me, please. Um, however, cultural symbolism is still common. For example, imagery associated with the cotton industry is a common theme in 20th century Tushkis. Because the cotton industry was of such immense economic importance, it had taken on cultural importance as well. Okay. So, do you see the word that you think it is? Do you see yes. the word economic? Yes. Economic importance, yes. Yeah. So, now that you see the two together, so you see cultural importance and you see economic importance and you see cotton industry together, stick with it. So, you might be like, well, is it cultural importance or is it economic? Well, you thought about economic and you see cotton industry, so stay with economic because you thought about it on your own. Um, and then you're good, okay? They'll probably take that. They'll probably, for this question, they would probably take both cultural and economic, and economic works, all right? Okay, um, let's jump these questions here, 32 to 35. We'll let people do that on their own at home, Maya. And we're gonna okay. do a couple of these uh, multiple choice just to give people an idea of how to do this, okay? All right, so Maya, can you read number 36 for me, please? How many sides of the Tushkis lack a border? Okay, trick number one for multiple choice. You should always try to answer on your own before you look at the answers. If you're looking at the answers um, before you're thinking, then you get yourself into trouble because you might be confused by multiple correct answers and you're always looking for the best answer. Um, so according to you, Maya, how many sides of the Tush kits lack a border? Four sides. How many sides do not have like a border around it? So how many sides are open? One, two, three, four. It can only be one, two, three, four or zero. Four, yes. So do you think it has no borders? So it's kind of fraying on all sides. It's kind of falling apart. Now, Maya, there, um, there is a possible answer here that you haven't thought of. There's the answer of, I have no idea. <laughs> I don't understand this question, to be honest. Okay. Like so, border. Yeah. So border means that it doesn't have an edge. Okay. So a border is a, it's an important word to understand when you're talking about it um, in school. Let me draw some borders here and then uh, you'll understand a little bit better. So when you have a piece of paper, okay, you have four sides on that piece of paper and you can add borders. Borders means that you give some lines like this to the piece of paper and then you write inside the borders. Okay, so that's called a border that goes around. It's basically a line that follows a path that's a border. Okay, so here you have a tapestry. It's like a piece of cloth that's like a painting. Okay, right? That's the cloth. Now, according to this passage, some of these have a border. So some of these sides have some different color. I think they said red or orange that goes along the edge. The question was how many sides of this tapestry have this colored border included into the tapestry. Do you remember that, Maya? Yes. Or maybe that's when you were fixing your computer, right? So <laughs> that's the part that you missed. <laughs> Answer is A. Um, it is actually B, the correct answer. It sounds to me like you're guessing and you don't want to do that. So the, what you want to do is you want to go back and read. Okay. Yes, that's what I need All to right. do. Yeah. Um, so you want to go back and read and um, read this sentence for me here. You'll see it in a couple of seconds. The one interesting aspect. Um, one interesting aspect of the Tush keys is that the outer border traces on the three. Yes. Three of the four sides of the fabric. The bottom side is borderless. Okay. So the question here is, how many sides of the tush gets lack a border, right? It's the paraphrasing. One, yes. So it's one, three, B, and, yes. and which one is it? Now that you read it, which side lacks the border? Um, third side. Um, Top, left, right, or bottom? Yes. 
What which which side of the Tushkits has no border? Top side. Wrong. It's the bottom side, Maya. It's the bottom side. The bottom of it. The bottom side. Yes. Yeah. The top is completed. The bottom is not. And then they explain it later that the reason the bottom is borderless is so that it shows that the story of the couple continues into the future. Okay, that's getting married. Okay. All right, Maya, so the trick with multiple choice is that if you're not sure about the answer to the question, don't look at the answers yet. Try to find the answer before you look at the choices. Okay, because the choices were will most of the time just get confusing. Okay, so here, number 36, how many sides of the tush gets lack a border? Before you start looking at the choices, look for lack a border. And then when you find that it's one side, then you can say, okay, it's B. All right. Does that make okay. sense, Maya? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay, Maya, thank you so much for helping me with those questions and thank you for confirming the pronunciation so that we all kind of feel a little bit more confident about that now. Um, and I hope you have an awesome rest of your Friday. Okay, thank you. You also. Bye, Maya. Bye. All right, it's Maya in Turkey. Oh, my picture's gone. All right, I'll be back in a second. It's okay. All right. I'll be back in a moment here. Um, the image of me will also return. <laughs> Good job, Maya. Um, all right. Uh, so students, uh, keep practicing. I'll leave you uh, with the rest of these questions, um, the multiple choice. And there they are, uh, 37, 38, 39, and 40. So when you do these multiple choice questions, Think about the answer on your own first. If you don't know, go back to the passage. Look at the passage again. I'll show you the passage one more time. I'll slowly scroll through it. Read the passage again. Try to find the answer. And only after that should you use deduction, elimination, and other strategies. Okay? All right. Uh, students, so those are the reading strategies for the day. There were quite a few there. Make sure to review the class when you have a moment. The session is recorded. Okay. And um, I will be back tomorrow with speaking. Until then, be sure to visit our websites. Thank you, volunteers, by the way, today. Thank you, Carolina, for helping. And thank you, subscribers. Uh, this was a subscribers chat class. Uh, make sure to visit aehelp.com for academic IELTS, gieltshelp.com for general IELTS. Okay, uh, these are the uh, websites that power these live classes and have all of our reading materials and uh, videos and audio materials. So check them out. Join the premium version of the of the course, and it's really going to help you. I'm Adrian. I'm signing out from beautiful Victoria for now, but I look forward to uh, catching up with all of you tomorrow. Bye, everybody.